Hello and welcome to the Pig Edge, Chagas Pig Podcast with me, Kieran Carl, bringing you all the latest news, information and advice to keep Irish pig farmers up to date. And for this episode, we're looking at optimising lactate and feed intakes with Emer McCrum, Specialist Pig Advisor at Ballyhays. And I first asked Emer to remind us again why we should be paying close attention to this area. The main objective to lactation feeding is to ensure all sows consume sufficient daily feed. And this is for two main reasons. So firstly, the sow needs sufficient intake for her own maintenance and for milk production requirements. So we're really trying to minimise sow weight loss with this. And secondly, then to optimise your litter performance. So all in, it's an investment in your sow and in the litter. So we might look more closely at the sow first of all, and we're all very well aware that lactation is the most demanding phase of the reproductive cycle. Sow energy requirements are very high during lactation. Like we just said, this is to accommodate her own bodily maintenance and the production of milk for her young. So the energy requirement of these needs will often exceed the energy intake for at least part of the lactation period. The sow therefore has to draw from her own reserves by mobilizing body tissues to provide nutrients for milk production. And this is primarily drawn from fat stores. For this reason, a degree of body weight loss and fat loss are completely normal processes during lactation. However, excessive weight loss can occur during the lactation period, which will disrupt subsequent reproduction. So what is excessive weight loss? Well, any greater than in the region of 10 kilos for first priority sows and 22 kilos or more for second priority sows is considered excessive. And this degree of weight loss is associated with re- reproductive per- problems such as extended weaning to service interval, reduced pregnancy rate and reduced embryo survival. So we must bear in mind that lactation feeding is important not just for the sow and the litter but for her subsequent reproductive performance too. Okay and is there any way then that farmers can investigate whether excessive weight loss is an issue on their farm? Yes, absolutely. And the best place to go to investigate this is the service area, where a regular assessment of the body condition of newly weaned sows will tell you a great deal. A good lactation feeding program will be positively reflected in the service area. So a recommended general rule of thumb is to target sows entering the farming house with a body condition score of 3 to 3.5. And this is on a five point scale. And you're looking for them to complete a four week lactation cycle with a subsequent score of three to 2.5 as a minimum. So in the service area, then you're keeping an eye out at the overall evenness of the batch, taking note of the prevalence of any thin sows that have clearly lost excessive condition as these thin sows will struggle and they are at a much higher risk of problems in the subsequent reproductive cycle. So service area is the place to go to keep an eye on this. And you also mentioned earlier that optimising litter performance is an objective of lactation feeding. Why is this important? Yeah, so piglet growth rate during the pre-weaning period relies considerably on the quantity and the quality of the sow's milk production. In terms of milk production, modern sows produce large volumes of milk, estimated between 10 and 12 kilos on average per day. And relative to her size, a sow will actually produce more milk than a dairy cow. So sow milk yield generally increases rapidly after farrowing and will typically reach a peak anywhere from 14 to 17 days into lactation. As a general rule, it requires four litres of sow's milk to generate one kilo of piglet weight gain. So if you consider here in Ireland, we're weaning on average 12 and a half piglets that have each gained at a minimum about 5.5 kilos, assuming a seven kilo of a weaning weight. Then you're talking in the region of 70 kilos of total litter weight gain, which creep feeding aside is predominantly from sow's milk. And if you consider that for every kilo of that 70 kilos of litter weight gain requires four litres of milk, you can really start to appreciate the demand for milk production that's placed on the sow. Additionally, then, it is estimated that up to 30% of piglet mortalities can be attributed to a lack of adequate nutrition, which can be due to insufficient sow milk production. So a good lactation setup is positively reflected on the piglet's performance during the pre-weaning stage and on the piglet weaning weight, which, as we all know, has a direct impact on the animal's subsequent lifetime performance. So it is therefore essential that we optimise the lactation feed intakes to maximise the performance of the piglets in the farrowing house. Is there anything we should be aware of before we focus on strategies to optimise lactation intakes? Yeah, absolutely. Good point, Kiran. I suppose before we look at lactation feeding, it is worth pointing out that the overfeeding of sows in gestation will reduce lactation feeding. So research has shown that as feed intake and subsequent weight gain during gestation increases, 
feed intake in the subsequent lactation decreases. So there is a correlation here. Excessive intake in the dry cell house can also negatively impact the sow longevity and it can compromise mammary development in gestation, which further risks a decrease in milk production. So if you are struggling to get the intakes in the farrowing house, this could be a good place to start. Assess the body condition of the sows at entry to the farrowing house. Like we said before, you're aiming for 3 to 3.5 at this stage. And if condition is strong here, it is a good indicator that the dry sow feeding program may need to be re reviewed. So in gestation, our main objective is to regain any condition or body weight lost during the previous lactation and to ensure the sow reaches her subsequent farrowing in the correct condition. And how do we know how much the sows actually need? Yeah, so there is a calculation you can do to determine the energy requirement of the sow. And this is based on her live weight, which is the maintenance component, milk production, which of course is dependent on the number of piglets that she's rearing, and based on the weight loss, which is the mobilization of bodily reserves. So that's the energy requirement. And the energy intake, on the other hand, is simply calculated as the kilos of feed consumed per day times the energy density of the diet, which is expressed in megajoules. And if this fails to meet or exceed the energy requirement that you've calculated for the sow, she will lose excessive weight in an attempt to maintain the milk yield. So really and truly calculating the individual sow energy requirement, it's probably not the most practical solution. And so instead, a lot of units have a well-established feed curve in place for lactating sows. So where do we start? So a good place to start when examining feed intakes in the farrowing room is to start with your lactation sow diet, as this is essentially the foundation for lactation intakes. Lactation diets should be of good quality, very palatable, and at a minimum should be 14 megajoules plus and about 0.9% lysine, which is quite a common spec seen in units across the country. However, as the average life born in Ireland for 2019 crossed the 14 mark for the first time to 14.12, we need to ensure our lactation diet spec is in line with the sow production on the unit. So there can be excessive costs associated with very high energy density diets, and therefore it is essential that we maximize our lactation intakes. So Pater Lawler did research in this area a few years ago and discovered excellent targets can be achieved by upping the spec and feeding a diet of 15.2 megajoules and a total lysine content of 1%. Now there is an additional cost associated with this. And in this instance, moving from a 14.2 megajoule ration to 15.2 megajoule, it was in the region of just over 30 euro per ton, which equated to an additional cost of just under seven euro, assuming 210 kilos consumed, or an annualized fee cost per sow of about 16 euros. However, an additional 0.33 of a pig produced per sow per year was enough to cover this additional cost, which was achieved through a reduction in empty days, increased subsequent born alive, as well as likely increases in sow longevity within the herd. So it is possible to look at the diet spec and maybe change the goalposts there. But with that said, the focus should always remain on increasing the intakes to maximise the value of the ration. Great. So we'll, we'll move now on to strategies to optimise lactation feeding. And can you talk us through the areas, you know, that we can focus on starting maybe with feed management? Yeah, absolutely. And we might look at the method of feed delivery to sows in the farrowing room first. So if you are liquid feeding, it is recommended to feed your lactating sows three times per day to encourage increased feed intake. The intake of wet feed sows is generally higher, and this is estimated in the region of 12% versus that of ad lib dry fed sows. So an ad lib wet dry feeder is a good alternative to wet feeding to promote increased feed intake, which can be done quite simply by mounting a water nipple into the feed trough. If this is not an option, however, and your sows are dry fed, dry feed is more readily consumed in pelleted form rather than meal form. So it might be worth looking at making a switch here. And if we move on then and maybe look at the pattern of intakes next, generally the appetite of the lactating sow is lowest immediately after farrowing, increasing gradually up to the third week of lactation. The feeding program therefore in many units reflects this and gradually increases the feed allowance available to sows over the first week before feeding at an ad lib level. However, high feed intake in the first two weeks of lactation is very important if average high lactation feed intakes are to be realized. It is therefore very important to ensure that you are not inadvertently restricting feed intake at this stage or at any stage over the lactation period by feeding sows less than they can eat. Restricting the feed intake in any week of lactation, whether it's imposed or perhaps due to poor appetite, will increase the risk of sow weight loss and can reduce reproductive efficiency. Furthermore then, sows 
actually do not compensate for lower feeding levels at any stage in the lactation period by eating more later on. So there is a high risk she will lose more body weight than is necessary. But to check if this is an issue, if you have an automatic feed system, just inspect the sow's trough before the next feed is due. This is a good way to monitor the adequacy of your lactation curve. If you are noticing that there are a large number of troughs that are completely empty and licked clean, these sows really could have eaten more and therefore there's room for additional feed to be fed. And you can adjust these sows up on the curve or additionally hand feed extra meal midway through feeds, between the feeds, by topping up the troughs of these sows. There is, however, a fine line between upping the sows on a curve and the risk of wastage. So any adjustments you make to the curve in the daily feed supply to sows should only be made about 30 minutes or more after feeding by observing the feed residues in the trough so as to minimise unnecessary wastage. And on the topic of feed, is there anything else that's important here? Keeping feed fresh is a very important point as pigs can be notoriously fussy when it comes to feeding time, especially where wet feed is concerned. So while we don't like throwing feed down the slats, sows will refuse stale feed and putting fresh feed in a trough with stale residues can spoil the next feed. So it is recommended to clean out any leftover feed at least once per day to ensure the sow has fresh feed delivered. And another very simple thing then is just simply getting the sows up to eat. It's important for intakes, but it's also a good way to check if the animal is eating as expected and also to check the overall health of the sow. Is there anything else then in the farrowing house that we can look at to optimise intakes? So the environment in the farrowing house is a very important consideration when looking to optimise feed intakes. Firstly, we look at the temperatures and it will probably come as no surprise to hear that high farrowing house temperatures will suppress intakes, especially if the sows are coming from quite a cool dry sow house as they must acclimatise to these higher temperatures. This is particularly the case for younger first and second litter sows who tend to be lighter eaters and for very large or overweight sows. Now, of course, it's not possible to run the farrowing house at cool temperatures as we have to consider the piglets in there. But once the youngest pig in the house is 48 hours old, you can step the temperature back to make it a more comfortable environment for the sow. So it's recommended to maintain the farrowing house temperatures in or around the 20 degrees Celsius mark, as this is approximately the upper level of the thermoneutral comfort zone for sows. It is, however, essential before you make any changes to the temperature in the farrowing house to ensure all your heat pads are functioning correctly and to minimise any drafts at piglet level as well. And lighting then is another factor that is important for intakes too. Research has suggested that providing 16 hours of light per day in the farrowing room compared to eight hours or less actually increases sow intakes and has a positive effect on the litter weaning weights and the improved rebreeding performance of sows. And of course, light is especially important at this time of year. Great. And we're coming to an end now, Emer. So is there any last uh, important points that you'd like to make? Yes, I think water is sometimes referred to as the forgotten nutrient and it plays a vital role in the farrowing house. It is essential that regardless of the feed system, sows must be provided with fresh, clean supplementary water to match their needs. Even wet fed sows may not be getting sufficient water from the feed mix, especially in those early days after farrowing. So it is important to check water flow rates to drinkers in the farrowing house too, as inadequate flow rates can restrict access to water. And sows do like to drink together as well. So the recommended flow rate for lactating sows is about two to four litres per minute. Ensuring there is sufficient trough capacity is another important consideration. With older troughs especially, we may not have sufficient space to deliver the necessary quantities of feed. And this is in particular something to watch out for with wet fed sows, especially at high feeding allocations, just to prevent the risk of wastage while feeding. Finally then, the water to meal ratio is something that should not be overlooked. The higher this ratio is, the more water the sow must consume to get a sufficient energy intake. And high ratios may limit the potential intakes as the volume the sow needs to consume is simply too much. This may be a problem on older feed systems or perhaps systems with long lines and many bends, but it could be worth looking at the installation of a new pump or a satellite tank in order to pull this ratio back in. And there is also an additional benefit of reduced slurry production with this move as well. So I suppose in summary, lactation is a critical period of the pig reproduction cycle and sow feed intake can represent a limiting factor on performance. Extra care should be taken in this period to encourage intakes with a view to supporting sow body maintenance and minimising excessive weight loss, thereby safeguarding her subsequent reproductive performance and longevity. 
By optimizing intakes, we can also maximize the litter performance and ensure we have good quality piglets at weaning, which has a positive impact on lifetime performance. So I suppose in short, it is worthwhile investing the time and attention here to support the sow and her young, both in the short term and into the future. That's excellent, Emer. Thanks. Some very, very important information there and very useful information. So thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks, Kieran. That's it for the latest episode of The Pig Edge and my thanks to Emer McCrum for joining me on the show. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe on Apple Podcasts or Spotify so you never miss a show. And for more farming information, go to chagas.ie. I'm Kieran Carl, and thanks for listening.